Hello, everyone. My name is Afia Yulin, and I am from CDRH FDA. It is my pleasure to introduce you our recent work, Clinical Trial Ontology. This project is a collaboration among multiple organizations. Therefore, we have a team to represent today. Three of us will take turns to talk about the ontology and its use cases. There are many definitions for clinical trials. The scope and ontological definition of a clinical trial is the very topic of the CTO. The clinical trials are the research studies conducted on human participants to evaluate medical, surgical, or behavioral interventions involving investigational drugs, devices, diagnostic products, treatments, and the like. As the clinical trial involves human participants following the de declaration of Helsinki, now most of the countries mandate the registration of clinical trials. The registration of the clinical trial is just the first step towards the openness and the transparency of the human subject research. As we can see here, that among the five pillars of the clinical trial transparency, we still have a lot to do in terms of posting the summary results, sharing the patient level data, and proactively publish the findings from clinical trials. CTO can help to accelerate this goal. The CTO organizes a small set of clinical trial focused terms, aims to enable the data integration, standardization, and sharing among clinical trial registries. Also, it provides a framework to link to other entities, such as chemicals, drugs, devices, vaccines, publications, and more. Currently, the CTO is accepted as an OBO ontology, and it is available on GitHub as well as BioPortal. Of course, it can be viewed by the Onto B tool. It reuses many existing ontologies. We now have 97 CTO specific terms and 242 reused terms from 19 other ontologies. This is an ongoing work. We have weekly Tuesday meetings and we aim to build a clinical trial data science community. Like many other ALBO ontologies, CTO is a hybrid of multiple ALBO ontology terms and the clinical trial specific terms, descending from basic formal ontology buffer through a process of specialization. And with ALBO ontology terms in the middle, CTO specific terms at the bottom. For example, the clinical trial is a subclass of human subject study from OPMI, which is a subclass of OB intervention, investigation. And finally, the current branch in Buffalo. We developed some CTO unique terms, such as clinical trial registry organization and identifiers, some roles like investigation collaborator role, investigator role, contact person role, and some dates. Those terms are necessary for modeling the clinical trial registry data. We are actively working on those term definitions and implementations. We are not satisfied by the current solution. We do need your input, and please check it out from the GitHub and submit us the issues or join the discussions or even the development. Now, I pass it over to Leon for his presentation on PubChem RDF. Leon, please, the podium is yours. Uh, thanks, Asia. Hi, I'm uh, Leon Qingliang Li from uh, NRM and CBI PubChem Group at NIH. PubChem is an open repository for chemistry at the National Institutes of Health, NIH. It contains chemical structures, identifiers, physical chemical properties, biological act activities, patterns, health, safety, toxicity data, and more. 
Hub can organize data through three in distinct interrelated databases, substance, bias, and compounds. Now, PubChem has more than hundreds of millions of unique chemical compounds and contributed by over 700 independent organizations around the world, and it increased on a daily basis. Next, please. PubChem RDF is a RDF version of PubChem. It allows users to access PubChem content through semantic, semantic technologies such as RDF triple stores, Sparkle queries. PubChem RDF data has more than 80 billion triples organized through over 16 subgraphs. These subgraphs can be loaded together or separately to local triple stores and then make a Sparkle queries to answer scientific questions. As we started to work on integrating clinical trial to PubChem RDF, we, can, we can't find any ontology that is readily available. Thus, we, we reach out to the expert in the community to develop such ontology for clinical trial data. As you may know, there are many types of names for a drug, which can be brand name, non-proprietary name, chemical name, research code, etc. For example, Glickvac is a brand name, Imatinib methylate is the active ingredient name for this drug, and imatinib is the active moiety that actually functions in human body. So with the help of a clinical trial ontology, we can actually accurately represent the molecular entity in clinical trials and their relationship to its chemical structures through PubChem RDF graph. By doing this, users can use PubChem RDF to conduct to conduct more sophisticated analysis of clinical trial data across multiple scientific domains. Um, so now I will hand it over to Stefan, please. Hello, I'm Stefan Geber from the Fraunhofer Institute uh, in Andalus in Germany. The focus of our work at Sky is on semantic technologies and information structure. We develop specific terminologies and ontologies, such as the clinical trial ontology, which are used in the text mining tool ProMiner. Results are deployed in our semantic search engine SkyView for context-sensitive visualization of query results. Next slide, please. With the arising COVID crisis, we faced a major issue in relation to knowledge retrieval in order to identify relevant metadata on COVID-19 from diverse public and scientific sources. Reliable information might come from registered clinical trials. In May 2020, the International Clinical Trial Register Platform, an umbrella organization from WHO, listed about 2,000 clinical trials from over 20 different repositories worldwide. However, the main issue is that these registers often have no or only limited information on study results, including links to related publications. Additionally, COVID publications are often accessible as preprints months before they were indexed in MetLife. Next. Skyview search engine has integrated CTO and publications and associated metadata from the COVID-19 specific COVID-19 literature corpus, which also contains preprint platforms such as BioArchive. We used CTO to write a ticker for the different clinical trial identifier formats. Using this, we could identify more than 2,000 publications referring to clinical trial registered in 11 different repositories. After expert curation, we finally identified 469 publications that contain information and results from 177 ongoing and finalized clinical trials. Next slide. The searches could be further specified by combining the clinical trial ontology with other ontologies, such as drug bank or COVID-19 ontology. With that, we will be able to perform specific queries, such as search for all COVID-related observational studies that consider the drug remediasivia. With that, I will give back the micro to Avia for the conclusion. Thank you, Stefan. So the CTO we presented here is just a starting point. Through its 
development, we are facing some challenges as open questions. The first, what is the ontological definition of a clinical trial? How is it different with any other non-clinical trial human subject research? The second, as real-world evidence is used for regulatory decision-making, will a retrospective observational study be considered as a kind of clinical trial? The third, the bubble-based realism approach introduces some challenges of modeling, such as the identifiers, dates. We rely on the community's input to move forward. The fourth, we also need to align with the existing well-adopted standards, such as CDISC, NCTI, SOMAT CT, through our outreach and collaboration. So this is an easy slide, but we want to recognize our group members, the finding, findings that supported our work, and acknowledge some FDA individuals who reviewed and cleared this manuscript. With this comes to the end of our presentation, and thank you all for your attention.